CFS and fibro come with many, many unexpected and confusing aspects, which we've come to call surprising symptoms. Here are descriptions of seven of them and ideas about what you can do if you experience any of them. The first I call delayed effects. Delayed effects. This one is very common and definitely took me by surprise. You may feel okay when you're doing something, but you notice that your symptoms intensify a few hours later or even the next day. So your body is reacting to overdoing, but it doesn't tell you until later. You can avoid this problem by pacing, which means finding your limits and then staying within them. You can determine your limits for individual activities by doing them for different lengths of time and noting how you feel during and after. For example, you might experiment with how long you can work in the kitchen or how long you can stay on the computer. You can get a more comprehensive understanding of limits by spending a few minutes a day keeping a health log. And we have lots of material on our website on that, uh, seefitselfhelp.org. There are many strategies for living within your limits, including taking rest breaks, having short activity periods, switching between tasks, and doing your hardest tasks during your best hours of the day. These and other pacing strategies are discussed in the series of videos we have on that topic. The second surprising aspect is post-exertional malaise. That's post exertional malaise, sometimes called PEM. Let me put that in bold. This means an increase in fatigue and other symptoms that's out of proportion to the energy expended. For example, you might have to rest for an hour after a trip to the grocery store or you may be able to walk for 10 minutes with no increase in symptoms, but walking for 20 minutes results in fatigue so severe that you have to lie down. The best way to avoid post-exertional malaise is to stay within your limits using pacing strategies like frequent rest breaks and the use of routines and rules. Another approach is to modify how you do things. For example, one person in our program who used to rest for one or two hours after grocery shopping was able to eliminate the rest after she began using a scooter in the store. Third, most people with CFS and fibro are trou troubled by cognitive problems often called brain fog or fibro fog. Let me put that down as brain fog. Brain fog. These difficulties include being forgetful, feeling confused, difficulty concentrating, and trouble finding words when speaking. <laughs> Brain fog can have several causes, including overdoing, stress, poor sleep, multitasking, which means doing more than one thing at a time, sensory overload, and medications. Many drugs have cognitive side effects. Strategies for reducing fog including, uh, include reducing stress, improving sleep, taking rest breaks, doing one thing at a time, using routine, using lists and other reminders, doing mental activities during the hours that you are most alert, avoiding overstimulation, and changing medication or dosage levels. For more, see our two videos on brain fog. Fourth is stress sensitivity. Stress sensitivity. Oops, that one got turned down to 12. Let me put up to 14 and bold it. There we are. Stress creates a double challenge for people with CFS and fibro. <clears throat> Both conditions add new sources of stress, such as unrelenting symptoms and uncertainty about the future. And both make people more vulnerable to, to the effects of stress, 
In some, if you have CFS or fibro, you experience the combination of more stress and greater vulnerability to stress. There are two main approaches to this, stress reduction and stress avoidance. Most people in our program use a variety of approaches from both categories. <clears throat> Many employ pacing strategies, pa pacing strategies such as reducing their activity level, learning to say no, taking daily rests, and using routine. Other frequently used approaches include doing a daily relaxation procedure, decluttering, for example, reorganizing the kitchen, limiting exposure to the media, limiting contact with some people, avoiding crowds, getting help with household chores, and making mental adjustments such as letting go of unrealistic expectations. Fifth, we have sensory overload. Sensory overload. Let me put that in bold and put, make it in the same font as the rest. Sensory overload. This can be created by sensory information coming from several sources at the same time. Noisy environments, fluorescent lighting, socializing in large groups, being touched or the feel of clothes on the skin, weather changes, and strong aromas. People in our groups report using three strategies to deal with sensory overload. <clears throat> One is to remove themselves from the situation that triggered the overload. For example, when at a noisy social event, they might go outside for a break. If taking a short break is not enough, they will use extended rest lying down, often in a dark and quiet environment. People also control overload using two preventive strategies, avoidance and setting limits. Avoidance means things like having a quiet and orderly home and visiting stores and restaurants during slow times. Examples of limit setting include limiting the length of sessions on the computer, limiting the length of phone calls, or the amount of time spent watching TV. The sixth one we call emotional sensitivity. Emotional sensitivity. This term refers to the fact that CFS and fibro often make emotional reactions stronger than they were before and harder to control. Here's how one person in our program explained it. My emotions are more sensitive than ever before. I cry more easily and I have less emotional reserve." End quote. The intensification of feeling occurs even with positive emotions. Any experience that triggers adrenaline seems to intensify emotions. We have found three strategies for dealing with emotional sensitivity. <clears throat> the first is distraction, which means turning your attention to something other than the trigger of, uh, of your emotions. Second, rest or taking a time out. And third, communication, telling family and friends about the effects of your condition on, the, on your emotions so that they will better understand your reactions. The last item is medication sensitivity and medication side effects. I'm going to just abbreviate this with the word, single word medications. The first part of, of this, that is medication sen sensitivity, refers to the fact that people with CFS and fibro are extremely sensitive to medications and because of this are usually started on dosages that are a small fraction of normal dosage levels. Second, we often experience side effects, especially fatigue and mental confusion. If you experience more fatigue or brain fog than usual after starting a medication or increasing the dosage, you might suspect a medication side effect and check with your doctor about alternatives such as lowering the dosage or changing to a different medication. So there you have it, seven surprising symptoms, unexpected and sometimes disconcerting aspects of CFS and fibro and what to do about them.